Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week, we're fishing the offshore waters of Miami. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forums for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together, we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's done for now. This week we headed down to the south section of Florida Sportsman Forum. I got bit. I got bit. We're in Miami fishing for dolphin, tuna, and sailfish. Oh, oh, oh. That is so oh. sick. I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it, the sky is just on fire tonight. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. Our trip started with meeting this week's guest host, Jeremy Martinez at Holliver Park, where we launched the Triton. I've been following Jeremy's posts on the forum and he's been on a great pelagic bite. You know, it's so unique about Miami, it's a big metropolis, but just a stone's throw off the beach, you can catch a great variety of pelagics. Jeremy's plan was to load the Triton's live wells filled with pilchards so we could head offshore, heavy chum, and live bait. We headed over to one of Jeremy's favorite bait spots, a couple throws in the nets, and we had the wells blacked out. You know, the weather we had this morning in Miami is nothing common for this area. Something like you'd see up north, you know, overcast, real low clouds, you know, almost a mist, a heavy mist in the air. But the forecast was for this stuff to burn off and the conditions were supposed to be perfect in the afternoon. All right, we're down here in the south section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, getting ready to go out at Holliver Inlet. Jeremy Martinez, Snooky J in the south section of that forum. What do you got planned for us? Um, we're going to run out of the inlet here and uh, hopefully we'll get on some sailfish, maybe some good dolphin bite. We got plenty of bait back here. We loaded the well, so uh, the sailfish bite's been pretty good. It just starts getting going this time of the year, so hopefully that's what we'll get. Some sails, maybe some dolphin, maybe a, a lucky wahoo or something. So We made our way out of Hallover Inlet, greeted to some nice calm conditions. You know, we had a northwest wind, which meant it's going to be nice and calm close to shore. The further off you went, though, it was going to get a little bumpy. But we went out, set up in about 90 feet of water at Jeremy's first spot. All right, so we got some pretty good conditions. We got a pretty stiff west wind that's going to allow us to fly the kite this morning. We were a little concerned we were going to have enough wind, but right, looks plenty, like plenty of wind. Yeah, we got lucky with the wind. So yeah, but it's lucky. It's a west wind that'll kind of lay the seas down a little bit, so we're not fighting a rough sea. And uh, hopefully, we'll get the kite up, get some gogs under it, and put some sailfish in the air. Getting to the first spot, we went ahead and put the kite out. You know, this is a technique that's really used a lot down here in South Florida for live baiting. Not only does it allow you to have a big spread, you know, covering a lot, big swath of water but you get a great presentation with your live bait. You can keep your baits right up on the surface where these pelagic fish love to feed. So now we got our whole spread out. We're just flying two baits off a kite. You're just flying a single kite today. We got two flat lines out on some spin fishers, live liners. And then we got one that's down with a, just a little weight, get it down in the water column. So we got it pretty well covered here. Great thing about the kite flying off the side, you can put a bait out, you know, two baits out, you know, 100 yards this way. Put your baits out on this side, you can cover a lot of water, big swath of water. So we're sitting down here in December right now. What's the peak time, you know, to be out here doing this type of kite fishing that we're um, doing here today? Um, definitely like December, January. I mean, all through the colder months, we get that northwest wind that continuously kind of kind of blows in. You know, as many cold fronts as we get, that kind of like turns them on. Um, but sailfish can be caught down here pretty much year round, but I mean, obviously you're gonna get the big numbers. I mean, sometimes guys catch, you know, 12, 15 in a day down here, even sometimes more, but uh, those are gonna be your really cold, kind of even rougher days. It seems like the rougher, the better. They like it a little rough sometimes. And This kite fishing down here, you know, this is that technique that everybody uses offshore, and it's, it's such a great technique because it's so visual. You know, it keeps you busy the whole time. It's real interactive. You're constantly adjusting the baits. The strikes are so violent. Man, it's the way to go down here. Definitely, it's almost kind of like sight fishing, you know. I mean, when you see them come in, you, you know, you can see them taking the bait right on top of the water. It's the closest thing to like sight fishing offshore, I guess. Yeah, it tees them up out almost. You yeah, know? I mean, sort of. Definitely is a, it's a, definitely a visual thing, and sometimes you'll see them, you know, bat the goggle eye out of the water, almost like they're, you know, like playing baseball with it sometimes. And I'm throwing these baits out. We're trying to kind of bring the fish to us. Live chumming is a pretty big deal down here in Miami. We try to, the more bait in the water, the more fish that are swimming around the boat, sometimes it brings the fish. It can bring kingfish in. A lot of times, sailfish will eat right off the transom of the boat. We've had to do that before, so it's kind of cool to watch uh, these fish kind of come to you, and then if you get a good enough 
bait spread out there and live chum, you'll see them busting right next to the boat and you can almost create a feeding frenzy like right behind your boat, which is always kind of nice. So that's kind of why we live chum, you know, kind of like this. We want to get as much bait as we can and, and kind of bring the fish to us, especially on the days where it's a little slower. This segment is brought to you by Troll Car Hooks. The rules have changed. Now with the northwest wind, we were getting pushed out to deeper water. We decided to go ahead and reset. But pulling everything in, we noticed out a little bit deeper, there were a bunch of birds working. We decided to head out there and see what the action was about. Pushed out a little deeper, saw some birds working. Must be a bunch of little tuna. I feel like he's got a little weight to him. Kind of small tell. guy, he's on the spinner, you know, it's hard to say. A little color there, finally. Nice skipjack. Skipjack. Yeah, a hefty one. Beautiful fish, smaller fish, good eating quality. They're, you know, they got sushi. A lot of people eat them for sushi down here. They here's, say they're really good. He's a good fight. Cool. All right, we're gonna send him back, try to find his bigger brother. <laughs> we wanted to stick with our game plan, so we headed back into shallow water to set up the kites to look for the sails. So we pushed back inside, set up a little shallower. I got bit. I got bit. All right. Both of them. Is he? Sail, little sail. <sighs> Just like that, set up. Little baby sail. <laughs> we're gonna get, we're gonna get one together. We we might, it might not be a double header, but it might, it sorta is. You're just wrapped up in here. Right, I'm trying to get it around there. Hang on. Alright, we push back in here shallow or shoot, we set up in 50 something feet of water. A lot calmer in here with this west wind. Prettier water too, surprisingly. Bluer water in shallow. This little sail ate a big kite bait right away. What a cutie. Let's get him released really quick. There we go. <laughs> little guy. They all count the same. You know, conditions change from day to day. One day the fish may be at 100 feet, the next day 150. You know, we just happened to find them super shallow today, 60 feet of water, which is a little uncommon for this area. But I tell you what, when you find a depth that they're in, you want to work that area for a while. Got a frigate bird working right. A lot of birds, a lot of action in here, man. Right here in a, like 100 feet of water, not even in 100 feet, 85 feet of water. <laughs> Pretty sick bite in 85 feet of water. These pelagics love to get on these reef lines because it holds bait. But at the same time, you know, you can take that opportunity and fish your bottom bait down. And this is exactly what Jeremy does. He covers the whole water column. Got baits up top, mid-level, and he also puts a bait down to the bottom looking for snapper and grouper. Bottom, bottom rod went off. Oh, nice mutton. Uh, you called it. You said, you know what Jeremy was saying, you put a bait down on the bottom. We do it all the time here. I mean, While this you're is, sail fishing I mean, that's or a, kite that's a, fishing. That's a keeper fish. I mean, probably, I mean, it's not the smaller side of mutton. Beautiful fish, but we, we always put a bottom bait down just because we're, you know, drifting over good bottom. So, Look. I mean, a lot of times you catch bigger ones like that, but that's just a beautiful, beautiful Look fish. Look at the color and of The pilchard's still sticking out of his mouth. I'm putting the kite away, man. The wind just dropped off to nothing. Out of nowhere, it's just gone. Can't even fly a kite now, so. I guess we're gonna slow troll. Bump troll, drift, do something. Now that we put the kite away, we're just gonna kinda go to a flat line spread. Probably start out by just drifting here. Drifting over the same kind of bottom area, same depth, pretty shallow. Got a couple on top on mono, one down weighted, another one with wire. So just kinda, again, covering that water column. It didn't take long, and we got the bite on the flat line. Nice little dolphin yeah, there. Like I said, it's kind of cool. These dolphins come in shallow, we're in 80 feet of water. Uh, you know, sometimes they move in to like, I've caught them in shallow as 40 feet, you know, sometimes under the birds. So it's kind of neat Freeze. to catch them in the shallow water. I mean, there's no fences because my <laughs> no dad always fences. said it, you know. Nice to catch a little pretty dolphin though in 80 feet of water. We're not even outside of 100. Burn no gas to come out here and do this. <laughs> He's barely hooked, so go ahead and sling him Look on at the there. colors. You Beautiful cannot replicate fish. that. I always try to tell people that. Look the at the blues. colors. Look at the blues on the fins. I mean, right along with our lunches. Dinner. Dinner with our lunch. We made a move up to the north. You know, we got bit by some small fish. You know, a little stuff to keep us busy, but, you know, conditions were kind of slow. How long have you been fishing down this uh, Miami area? Um, pretty much um, my whole life. You know, I was uh, born in Atlanta, but we uh, moved to Miami at a pretty young age, so. You know, I always fish down here with 
We had some family that used to live down in uh, the Homestead area, so I used to come down and fish with them a little bit in uh, Jacksonville. So I've been coming to Florida since I was young, but Miami, uh, we've been living here for probably about 25 years. So I've been fishing the area for a good 25 years now. And you're a police officer, right, on the police water? Police officer, yes, sir. I work in the water in, in, this, in this general area. Not so much offshore, cool. but, you know, kind of inshore. It's a pretty neat job. I mean, uh, Miami's a crazy city, so it keeps me busy, obviously. <laughs> this segment brought to you by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. So we're still slow trolling, but now, you know, light conditions are getting a lot more favorable for a good bite. It's getting to be late in the evening, you know, these fish are going to start to feed. I notice off on the bow there's a lot of birds working, so I go ahead and grab that topwater plug and jump up on the front. Oh! <laughs> Lies low, end of the day, birds are feeding on the weed lines. Nice. Throwing the Uzuri in there, doesn't get any better than that. A little Bonita. How cool is that? Well, that is pretty neat. You know, the great thing about this area is you can find these birds that are feeding on the surface and they're a great indicator of where the fish are. You know, and to throw a plug to them, it's real visual, it's highly effective, and it's a lot of fun. You know, we've been seeing these birds out here busting all day. Just mixed out here in this weed line. You know, this is why you have a. You know, I got this Yozuri topwater on a, a small rod, something you can just pitch to really quick. And it's so important to have something like this ready, stand by. I'm having a blast. You know, I'm able to use light tackle, you know, small spinning rods, topwater plugs, real visual. It doesn't get any better than this. Oh, oh look at this. God. The oh. water is purple. You can walk on the jellyfish. The water is purple. <laughs> that ain't a bad little skipjack. On a plug. You know, I was catching all the bonitas and skipjacks that I wanted, but finally then, I got into the bite that I was looking for. There he is. Got him. Oh. Nice black fin. Is it? Yeah. This might be eating size here. Oh, yeah. He's easy, easy, easy. Oh, you risky son of a gun, oh. you. Dinner and a show. Got the sale for the show, and now I got dinner. Little dolphin, tuna. Oh, they're strong. They are, man. That's what I'm telling you. That little tail is, is, a, is like a bullet. It's a torpedo. He is at Look at that. How cool is that? You know, so now we have three species of tuna. We got the bonita, which are, you know, pretty common down here. Skipjack as well. You know, probably what's a little bit more prized, at least for me, is the blackfin. You know, and to be able to get them on a topwater plug and, you know, not having to throw live bait, you know, this is what I came for. This thing was built for speed. Look at this. He's got recesses where his fins fall back in. Everything is just built for speed on these guys. Hey, George, I mean, you can do this topwater stuff with light tackle almost every evening out here. I mean, oh. the birds kind of, you know, they hone in on that evening bite. And uh, especially in the winter, you know, you got a lot of bait that moves in on the reef and kind of in close to the shore. So all we've done is found these birds working on this little rip here, just kind of motoring along with the topwater plug, throw that usuri out there and just rip it across the top. Yeah, it looks like they're busting maybe over about one o'clock, George. It looks like. Uh, Couple birds working over there pretty good, so I'm gonna put you over there and see if we can get on them. Oh, I got another one! <laughs> another black fin? Makes it even sweeter on the Yozuri, man. <laughs> oh, another blackie! So this nightscape is, is phenomenal, it's surreal. The colors in the sky, it's just, you can't even describe it. The water's purple with jellyfish, you know, crystal clear water. We have these tuna swimming around us. And the next thing you know, I got a pile of dolphin around me. Oh, oh dolphin, that, dolphin, that, dolphin, 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 Is that a dolphin? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, he's trying to eat my, he's trying to eat the plug out of his mouth. Just drop it right there. Here he comes, here he comes. Boom. Whoop. Let me, let me, let me, let me stick his ass. Oh, yeah. Hold him in the water, let me get this tune in. <laughs> no, he's trying oh. to eat That's awesome. <sighs> I don't see any more with him right now. Yeah, sure. there's over here. No, I saw them. Oh yeah, they're all here. Grab that flat. <laughs> oh, he took it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> nice. All right, let me open the Yeti because I'm going to be bailing them in. I know. I'll tell you what, man. What a day. We had a little lull there in the middle. At the end of the day, it just turned on and made it worth staying out here 
all those hours. Totally. I mean, this this alone makes it worth it. I mean, the fish are like a plush, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. We live in such a beautiful place. But yeah, the, the bite turned on like an hour before dark. You got those big black fins on a topwater plug. That was, that was sick. Killer. Had some dolphin follow them up. Sales earlier. Man. No, had a great day. I, I appreciate, appreciate it, man. No, let's get no this doubt. thing home, clean let's, it up. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, those tunas aren't uh, friendly to the boat, man. So let's get a little uh, wash on her. Jeremy and I, we fished from sun up to sundown. We got the best of this day. We decided that we were going to call it quits, but make plans to get back out in the morning. This segment is brought to you by Triton Boats by Earl Bentz. We take America fishing. In today's seminar, I'm going to talk to you about kite fishing. You know, down here in the south section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, this is a technique that a lot of the guys use for live baiting offshore. It's a highly effective technique for great presentation of your bait. I'm going to break it down in the simplest terms. Really, what you have just here is a senator with some spider wire, 60-pound braid on it, um, a small kite rod. You have your kite. There's many different manufacturers of kites. Some have light winds, heavy winds. Um, this is an adjustable AFCO kite. And then you have a couple of release clips. So this is the working end, the kite end. What we use is typically, you get, you're gonna have to use a conventional reel because you're constantly letting line in and out. We're using these Penn International 16 VSXs, great you know, for, for this type of technique with the 30 pound mono. All we've done here is doubled our line up with a spy, uh, spider hitch or a bimini. At the very top end, we have a ceramic ring. This ceramic ring is used to go into the release clip. That's all this is for, is to hold the line into the release clip. Below that, we have a float. This is more of an indicator than anything else. You know, this is what we're looking for while the bait is flying. If you have heavy wind, what you're going to need to do is, you know, add a little bit of weight. What this does is keep that bait in the water. We go to a snap swivel. Above that, we just have a simple loop on a 15-foot section of, I'm using 50-pound Berkeley fluorocarbon leader here. And then typically what we're using down here is a circle hook. This is just like a 6-0 trocar circle hook. I'm typically flying a single kite with two release clips. You know, some guys will use three release clips, other guys are flying, you know, multiple kites. In a bay boat, you know, you can easily fly two kites, but for this application in today's show, you know, we just flew a single kite and it was very effective. So we're in Miami. We had a great first day with Jeremy, decided to do it again. You know, the morning started a lot like the first day. Conditions were a little bit better with the weather, you know, a lot clearer. We headed over to the bait spot, loaded the wells back up again, and headed out of Hallover Inlet. So we're in the same area that we finished off the night before. We don't even have the cameras out yet. Jeremy gets a bait in the water and he already has a fish on. All right, day two, South Section, Florida Sportsman Forum, back out with Jeremy. We had such a great day yesterday. Decided to come back out here today. Pretty much same thing, loaded the live well, came out here, just started chumming, didn't take long at all. I already got a fish on. You know, there's not enough wind this morning to fly the kite, so we're just flatlining some live baits out the back and throwing some plugs off the bow. Sitting here in this weed line, just chumming, throwing some plugs. This thing swam along. Nice little dolphin here, a little bigger than a flipper. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> you just sit out here in this, we set up on this little weed line, like 70 feet of water, where we finished off yesterday. Birds were working, just start chumming with pilchards, and it's amazing. The fish will come to you. They're gonna run down these weed lines like a fence line, looking for bait. Bring it back your way yeah, one, one, one more, more time. Little head to me. Yeah. Nice shot. <laughs> Pada bing. <laughs> That'll work. A little bigger than ones yesterday. Sweet. Good eating size right there. Look at the colors on pretty that. Fish. God, what a pretty fish. We were on this beautiful rip all morning long. We decided that we're just gonna run down this rip and look for some activity. It didn't take long. Jeremy noticed the wake being pushed on the surface. He grabbed that plug, got up on the bow, and made the cast. Here come, nice dolphin. Dolphin on the Yuzuri. I saw him waking across. More with him, more with him. All right. More with them. You know, I'm still psyched on catching the black fin on the topwater plugs the night before, but to get a, you know, to get a dolphin on a topwater plug, and this isn't a baby fish. This is a decent fish. Ready? Nice. Hang on. Uh, it's in there. That's We're a better fish. Yeah. That's fun on a plug, man. Wow. 12, 15 pounder. You know, so often is the case that when you get into these dolphin, a lot of times they're a bunch with them. The secret is to keep one in the water, you know, and just the rest just stay with them. It's crazy. 
So we kept, we hooked one, kept him in the water, heavy chummed, and I tell you what, this area just came alive with fish. We are in them thick now, old school of them. Sailfish are jumping around us, catching dolphin. You know, there was a pile of these little sharks swimming around the boat, and they were like, they were so curious. They were chasing after the dolphin, they were swimming around the cameraman. It was just, it was incredible to see. You know, we have all these dolphin on. Things are getting a little sketchy with these smaller sharks. The cameraman just gets out of the water and this big shark shows up. Look at that Oh, you better don't, don't, don't get in the water. water dude. Don't get in the water. Holy Don't get in the water. There is so much life going on right now. We're in this weed line. We've been heavy chumming. We got the dolphin, we got sharks, tuna. It is insane. We're creating our own little biosphere here by dumping out a bunch of bait. Look at the bonita blowing up. A little skipjack. Look at them all with him. He got his buddies with him too. Another nice, nice little skipjack there. Yeah, another one. This place is loaded with them. They are full of them right now. It's insane. Jeremy Martinez, AKA Snooky J, in the south section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, has been on a great pelagic bite. I've been following his post for a while. So happy I made the trip down here to Miami. This offshore bite was absolutely insane. It was because of his posts and his reports that I chose him to fish with. Keep your reports coming, and I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. Nice release. Yeah, but the species keep coming. Fish. Pretty. Crazy looking fish. That's that's good luck right there. I caught the treble hook of the last guy that caught him. 